Hi, everyone, and welcome to another uh, lesson of Kabbalah for everyone. Today, I want to talk about the inner definition of self. Now, the two souls that we've been speaking about, the animal soul and the godly soul, these two souls, they wage an intense and constant battle deep within us. And they strike a different balance within each person. And I think what this does is it provides us with new parameters for understanding who is a tzaddik, who is righteous, who is a rasha, who is the opposite of righteous, and who is a bainani, who is this intermediate. The bainani, according to Kabbalah, especially according to the Tanya, is actually on such a high level that we would be grateful if we can reach the level of the intermediate. In a righteous person, the battle between the two souls is over and the winner is the godly soul. It subdued the animal soul. It took the animal soul prisoner and it gave it a completely new identity. Not only has it stopped opposing the godly soul, it actually changed sides. As a result, the righteous person, the person that we call the tzaddik, never sins. That person only does good deeds, only does mitzvot throughout the day, and has absolutely no desire or no interest in anything outside the realm of holiness, outside the realm of mitzvot, outside the realm of goodness. It's not in his actions, not in his words, not even in a single thought does this person do anything that's opposite from holiness. So if we're going to talk about the tzaddik, the righteous person, we're not going to go anywhere because we can't even relate to that. We can't even, I don't know, strive to be that. Maybe, maybe, maybe a few of you have the ability to strive to be that. And if you do, let me know, because I would love to be able to strive at least to be that. Let's focus on what Rabbi, what Rabbi Schneer Zaman of Liadi, the Alter Rebbe, focuses on in the Tanya. Let's focus on the Benini. He calls the Tanya Sefer Shel Beninim, the, the book of the, the intermediate, the book of the, the average. The Benini is more complicated. According to the Tanya, the Benini never sins and spends their whole day doing good deeds, doing mitzvot, just like the righteous person, just like the tzaddik. So why isn't the Benini considered a tzaddik, you ask? How are they different? The answer is this. Deep within the Benini, the battle between the godly soul and the animal soul not only continues, but it gets even more intense with time, which means as the Benini subdues the animal soul within him, the difficulties become more greater become greater. The Benini's drive in life is not pure. It's not focused like the righteous person's drive. They're distracted by uh, the attractions of physical things. So each round of the battle ends with a decisive win for the godly soul. No sins in action, no sins in deed. But so in terms of this person's behavior, they remain someone who never sins. Actually, the, the very notion of sin, the very notion of even the tiniest of sins is completely foreign to the Benini. In the same way that 
maybe you and I would never even consider committing murder. God forbid. Just as it is perfectly clear to us that all the money in the world couldn't get us to murder someone. So for the vanity, even committing the slightest of sins is totally foreign to that person. So just as a normal person would never willingly ingest poison because, I mean, a person desires to stay alive. So a banini would never commit a sin. The, the banini sees the sin as a spiritual poison. The, the banini's level of knowledge, the banini's level of awareness and self-control is so great that they're able to maintain a constant control over their urge despite this raging inner battle within them. Their absolute boss when it comes to the deeds they perform, the words they say, and even the thoughts they think. Sounds like a righteous person, right? But he's not. This vanity still experiences the inner struggle. The righteous person doesn't have the inner struggle. They've totally subdued the evil. The Bainini still has the inner struggle. But the Bainini win, wins every single battle and exercises full control over the three modes of expression, thought, speech, and action. But there's a dominant force, an inner drive. The war goes on. The Bainini has not yet completely uprooted the natural attraction to the worldly and to the physical pleasures. And so it may sound like it's really, really difficult to be a Bainini. How am I going to do that? How can I even try that? But as we go through this process, and we uncover who is the Bainini, because a lot of what we're going to start doing is exploring who is this average person, who is this intermediate. I think we're going to start noticing that this is the kind of person that you and I can strive to be. We want to be like this person. The person who has these inner demons, this inner drive, but the goodness within them always wins the battle. I mean, we even see that in, in simple things in our lives. But imagine if we can do that in every aspect of our life, in every element of our life. Imagine the kind of person we would be if we were in that level of control and not just control over our actions, control over our words, control over our thoughts. Say, wow, control over our thoughts. We're gonna talk about this in the future we're going to talk about this idea of that even our thoughts are not really part of us. Actually, Kabbalah calls them the garments of our soul. I'm getting a little ahead of, our, of myself now, but just to give you an idea that even though you can't, you can't get, stop thinking, you can change. You can divert the thought. And we're going to talk about that idea of diverting thoughts in the future. I'm really excited to continue exploring all this with you. And so uh, we have a lot more to talk about. We'll, we'll continue soon.